and uh, uh, can you see my uh, first slide? Yes, sir. Is it? Yeah, great. Thank you. So, uh, collaborative research, as I already told you, a wonderful topic, and hopefully we'll have more interaction. I, I have just keep some 10 to 15 minutes or even more uh, for interaction at the end of my lecture, so that more and more interaction will rather help us to understand this particular concept of collaborative research. This is the Humanity Main Building. Uh, I hope many of you, many of you, must have visited. But if you are not visited, it's my stunning invitation to all of you. I think Vipin is there. Vipin can take you around. Then this is the Caricam Center where we will be, where we are working uh, for the uh, major projects. And this is one of the unique center where you'll find that uh, the state of the art machineries are uh, under the one roof. Though many IITs and ICs are having uh, better machineries than what we do have. But then, you know, in IITs and IC, you'll find that every machine is in, located in different, different laboratories. And then you will have to go and take the permission and maybe uh, finding problem to look at the machineries, which is the state of the art machinery. But in our CARCAM center, where everything is under one roof and you can just go and uh, have a look at various uh, machines that we do have, state of the art machineries. At the same time, what exactly we are doing? And that's why, the uh, as I already told you, invitation to visit you not only the VNIT main VNIT as such, but the CARICAM Center also. And uh, it's a responsibility of the VPN that he has to see that uh, uh, all the faculty members and students, uh, those who are interested in visiting our CARICAM Center VNIT, he should bring it to them to Nagpur. Maybe once our pandemic is over. So just this word pandemic has come. I wish that everybody is safe and taking care. Now, let me show you the agenda uh, for the, I will be now discussing the necessity of research in academic institutes. What should be our approach? Then uh, what exactly we should look under the head of research grant? What are my suggestions? And then finally, the conclusion. So let us start with the first very important point, the necessity of research in academic institutes. Remember, in academic institutes, we are always uh, thinking about the traditional way of learning. The teacher is coming in the class and discussing, uh, writing something on the board and all that. So uh, I have rather uh, written some more sub points under that like what is teaching in today's world of what internet when we talk about the information explosion so what exactly the teaching is all about then secondly when we say that teaching plus learning leads to knowledge so what this knowledge further leads to that is very important because uh, uh, everybody stops at this particular concept of knowledge or the point of knowledge and then further what we require to do after the knowledge is gained so that what i'm going to discuss with you so third point is research adds value to teaching as exposures to the students to the state of the art facility yes that is very very essential so that also i'm going to discuss and then finally whatever the deliverable that helps nation to develop that means if the deliverable is the research in academic institute that helps the nation to develop. So I'm going to explain all these points one after the other. So first point is teaching in today's world of internet. As I have written in bracket, teachers are everywhere now. Gone are the days when the, we used to see the teacher only in academic institute. Now teachers are everywhere. I hope you, everybody must be aware of the various initiatives by the government of India, like Swayam, then the e-learning, distance learning, MOOC, and there, is a, there are international champions also on online teaching. They are EDX and Corpus Cara and all that. So they are all people, those who are actually taking more interest in online courses. So I should say that teachers are everywhere. If teachers are everywhere, I am a bit worried about this particular teacher. Then where is the scope of teaching in the classroom when something is drawn on a blackboard? Students are actually uh, noting down whatever is been drawn on the blackboard and all that. 
I think we need to rethink over this that whether this is then absolute and only we should go for the online teaching. You know, there can be a lot of debate we can uh, go through with this particular aspect. But let me tell you about this uh, basic teaching and today's uh, te uh, teaching in the world of internet. So there are two things which I would like to tell you from my own experience. Uh, as I mentioned to you here, if you look at the first uh, slide, the, or the photograph, teaching will be more effective if the research done is informed to the students during classroom teaching. Remember, uh, gone are the days when the teacher used to say, uh, whatever the teacher used to say in the class, the students used to note it down and then they used to mug it and ultimately their ultimate aim is to see that the, uh, uh, we should, uh, they should be in a position to solve the problems in the or uh, they should be, uh, they should solve the um, uh, examination uh, problems. So, this is not required nowadays because students sometimes feel that whatever the teacher is teaching in the class that is already available on the net and he may rather go at home or in hostels and go, go to the various courses as I already mentioned to you and he will understand the concept better than what the teacher is teaching in the class. That is bound to happen. But remember here that the teacher who is actually teaching the concept at the same time he is, uh, he is informing the students that what exactly the new thing he has done in that particular concept, the students will be more happy. They will find it, oh, this thing is not available on the net, what the teacher is saying. And that is what I said, my experience, my experience uh, that the reach, uh, when, when I'm teaching casting to the UG students, I used to tell them what exactly we are do, uh, doing under the casting, the research that to related to the casting simulation. And that's why I've shown you here the smart foundry, which is actually uh, shown as a board uh, uh, in the CARICAM center. This is the one of the major projects that we are presently executing, where we are doing the work or rather research that how best the zero defect casting is possible. And remember, the casting industry is always looked about, looked at the dirty industry and uh, very complex industry, having more uh, human labor problems and all that. We want to rather show to the world that if uh, the foundry, which is a basic industry, how best it will be possible for us to get the zero defect casting in one uh, product in one go and top of it, how the newer techniques are used in this particular casting. This is what I have, I have seen that when I tell the student like how we are using this 3D printing in this uh, in casting, how do we use the data analytics in casting? Rather, how do we set the parameters and what happens if the, uh, during the operation something goes wrong, how exactly the other parameters are required to be set? This is not at all available anywhere on the net. But this is what is through your own experience. And that's why I mentioned here, like the teacher, if at all he is doing any research in that particular subject, that he should inform the students. The students will find that particular class very, very interesting. And they will be more interested in actually looking at that particular subject, not only from getting the marks in the examination, but doing something related to that in the field. So the, what is interesting here to understand that the, we should have this research uh, background uh, if at all the, we want the teaching to be very effective in today's world of internet. Now let us look at the second point. Teaching plus learning leads to knowledge. Yes, that is all. And then after that, what? Now let me show you this important slide. I found this slide very interesting. What is mentioned here, teaching plus learning leads to knowledge. Now I have made the two uh, way uh, arrow to show that there is a low end knowledge and there is a high end knowledge. Now I have, I have not made it, uh, rather kept it in a subjective way, but I have made it in an objective way saying that low end knowledge means 
getting the graduation uh, uh, doing graduation in that particular field and you are saying that okay i have the low end knowledge that means a graduation what is a high end knowledge naturally the post graduation or the phd to which we call as a research remember phd is research even post graduation also a pre research so called the stem and that is what we have uh, uh, rather uh, showing it here on the slide as a high end knowledge now this high end knowledge is very important for us let us look at the low end knowledge and high end knowledge and like what exactly is happening today in the present uh, technical field only focusing on the low end knowledge that means uh, getting uh, uh, more and more the degree holders so the uh, slide speaks of everything look at this particular industry this is a traditional industry and these are the graduates which uh, who are coming out of the educational institutes they are more in number and they are looking for the job in this traditional industry now this demand and supply equation is totally imbalanced now the more people coming out of the academic institute but the demand for the graduate engineers are not picking up in traditional industry and then we we discuss a lot about this particular scenario then we say that okay can we have the internship uh, program can we allow the students to work in the industry and all that then there is an another issue that the traditional industries are not ready to accept the uh, interns uh, for the for their work even even if they go for the internship the people working in the factory or that particular industries are they are so packed with their day to day work that hardly they find time to interact with you i can tell you my own experience when i was the students and in 1984 85 during the summer training when i had when i actually did my summer training in the kirloskar tractors at nashik that time it was uh, the tractor unit by the kirloskar group i found that for two months when i was there the people in the factory they were so busy that hardly they used to find any time to talk to me and then i used to go along with them here and there and then discuss with them then walk and talk and all this type of the things so when you focus only on the low end knowledge the scenario is very problematic and that is what everybody talks about a lot about it now you know as an engineer you have to always think about the solution to the problem people will discuss about a problem but engineers should talk about the solution to the problem so what exactly is the need here need is to focus on high end knowledge and research research and innovation the manufacturing industry today they are customer centric remember they are focusing more and more on the customer because they want their product to be sellable and there is a stiff competition everywhere because of the global market so the innovation and comfort is the buzzword today and remember i am just showing you this particular picture where you find that that particular lady sitting on a bean bag which is giving her the most perfect comfort it is because the that particular bin bag adjusts itself in such a way that uh, it will suit to the anatomy of every customer and therefore every customer is satisfied so that is customer satisfaction customer centric manufacturing industry if that is the scene today then in that case you have to focus more on the high end knowledge of the research and research and innovation so what exactly is required to be done now look at this particular slide bit uh, cloudy but i would like to explain you i would like to make it more simple to you now this is one of the poster which uh, uh, one of my student has uh, seen it in berlin and he has sent to me it is mentioned in that university how much startup is in your phd project this is what and that they say that you if you want to register for phd you will have to answer this question now remember this is what exactly is the need that phd 
in engineering and technology if we say that it is the research that means there has to be some innovation either in the process or in the product you may say that at the end of your phd you have to file the patent and see that your uh, process or product gets patented but they should not stop it there once you patent the product or the process then you have to find out the company which can actually take that particular product in the market and it reaches to the customer and customer is satisfied but if you don't find such companies if companies are not um, uh, ready to take your uh, rather product or process hopefully you have to start your own company and that is what is required that's what they say be job creator and not job seeker the people they always talk about okay this is very easy to say but very difficult to start and all that yes that is true you have to go from your comfort zone to the somewhat discomfort zone get used to it slowly you'll find out that this comfort zone becomes comfortable now in the same slide I, just two days back in economic times i have read the interview with uh, nandan nilekeni who is the uh, actually chairman of infosys and this is a complete interview uh, uh, and i have actually highlighted some part of the uh, that uh, question which has been asked to him and i have written it down here he has been asked you think the future for india will be where more small players also compete that is what has been asked to him what he say i am of the firm belief that it is not about few companies creating millions or millions of jobs but millions of companies creating a few jobs each that is what i see as the future yes that is what is required if you only look at the big big companies and just asking them that you should create more jobs more jobs you know the infrastructure required will be tremendously large they may not be in a position to actually sustain that much and they may not be in a position to produce so many jobs also because you require a lot of jobs i already told you about that low in tech knowledge that how the jobs are required but if you see that the phd students are starting their company or even mtech students is nurtured in an environment where he will be in a position to start his own company then hopefully that every startup that is initiated by the research student that will actually fetch some more jobs for the other students or other people so think of suppose there are 10 startup because there are 10 phd students those who have started that and everybody needs minimum 5 employees in that particular company to run so it is as good as creating 50 jobs i am showing you very very low figure it is more than that but it is 50 jobs that gets created but one more thing which is really interesting here to look at that does it mean that the phd should always lead to startup yes that is what is required even the people like us those who are guiding the phd students there is a tremendous responsibility on our shoulder that every phd we are guiding we will have to see that that leads to some innovation that leads to some new process that leads to some new product and that will only lead to some startup and it will be our responsibility not only on the guide but on the whole institute to see that more and more startup comes in that is only the solution even nandan nalekani says like that now the next important point which is again important for the necessity of research in academic institute research adds value to teaching as exposure to students to the state of the art facility now uh that's what we uh, always say that uh, this is from my own experience uh i i always used to say in many of my lectures i like the advertisement of uh, ghadi detergent bar pehle istemal karo fir vishwas karo so i'm going to tell you from my own experience that how research adds value to the uh, students learning now this is the cad cam center where as i already told you just at the start we are executing presently the two major projects having the financial outlays nearing to 49 crores and we have finished earlier also some three four projects 
and we are also entering into the newer and newer areas in under this karkam center so what is the uh, what is exactly the our acumen acumen is that we are creating the facilities at karkam center these are the two rapid prototyping machines that we have then we have all the cnc machines and everything even e foundry cell induction furnace everything is there and you can see here the 3d bio plotter one of the state of the art machine only two such um, uh, machines are available in india one is in iit kharagpur and second one is at vnh nagpur now when i actually in, uh, shown to the student that how the 3d bio plotter is useful in medical application of rapid prototyping which is the actually the engineering technology so amalgamation of medical and engineering through such high end tech, uh, instrument when i explain to the student i found they get, they get vibrant and they feel that yes i must work in engineering because it has got an application even in the medical sciences so that i can serve the society i'm going to show you quickly once uh, Uh, a day, uh, different part, uh, different time of my lecture. That how this is useful, and this is only possible because we have this state of the art um, facility established because of the research uh, project. So, what are our success? Our success is that we have we are now running successfully layer manufacturing course, which is offered to the PG students and even. to the ud students also and they actually learn what is the new manufacturing technology then we have established a new research labs called a tissue engineering as already told you tissue talks about medical science engineering talks about engineering and it is a perfect amalgamation of tissue uh, tissue engineering around 11 phd's turn out under my uh, uh, guidance and i am really happy that the fourth point is more important that three startups as an r&d project spin off is possible you yeah, i'm really happy to say that these startups are actually the extension of phd work you can visit the website of our companies the three companies one is oppo i care solution private limited where we are actually manufacturing the glucoma detector the prisi search private limited where we are uh, manufacturing the surgical guide Uh, for the surgeon and then daikul am private limited where we are building the class 3 medical implant which is scaffold and it is leading to bone being replaced by the bone so these are the three startups that we have started uh, we are already uh, uh, entered into and these startups two are already incubated in our vnit and i am very happy to tell you that it is the extension of their phd work like three students like uh, one of my student dr mawe has work on the glucoma detector and he has, he has started this poco i care solution private limited and uh, um, uh, along with uh, neha this is search private limited the dr sandeep dahake he work extensively on the surgical guide during his phd he has actually shown that how the surgical guide is important for the surgeon to Uh, overcome the problems of implant fixation, and uh, he has started the company. Yeah, and the Daikul AM Private Limited is by Dr. Pranav Sapkar, who has actually worked extensively on the tissue engineering or the development of the scaffold using a bio plotter that I have already shown to you. And he has started his own company. So these are ah, uh, this is our success. So what I would like to tell you, the research adds value in the sense the students get exposure to the state of the art facilities. and they found it more uh, interest in the engineering otherwise you know many times i have seen even the educated people they are talking okay just do the engineering and go to the management and ultimately in the management there is a lot of things available and all that no i think it's a wrong way of guiding the students you have to tell them there is a tremendous potential in engineering and this is how we need to look at and finally how the deliverable helps nation to them this is again very interesting because when i say necessity of research in academic institute so what are the deliverables in academic uh, deliverable of this research and how it helps the nation to develop now for that i am showing you a very interesting uh, slide with the two main figures 
the one is about the non uh, non oil trade deficit which is rising we always talk about the trade deficit and we say that it is because of the oil there is a trade deficit no not only the oil but even a non oil sector also the trade deficit is more what exactly it means the import is more export is less the second figure talks about the patents that are granted and patents that are filed so if you look at the way, uh, uh, advanced countries china us japan european countries and all that the this is a figure which i got it uh, 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 for 2017 but their their patent filing and uh, go or even patent granted goes in lakhs in our case patent filing is in thousands and granted is still less and i'm talking about all the patents together so uh, the, it's not only the patent related to the product and process of engineering uh, sciences so it's all patent together the figure is very less when we have 132 uh, million uh, population when 132 crores of the population and this is a poor picture this is really disturbing so what is important to look at need to orient the education institute where ecosystem for research and innovation is created that means innovation is a buzzword uh, so naturally we'll have to see that there is an ecosystem and that's why i have written only two points at the end the startup focuses on innovation and innovative product remember in the bracket what are written while existing manufacturing setup focuses on old age technical process remember and they don't talk about any innovation or innovative product we want to rather enter into the startup uh, arena number two need of import substitute product to overcome the trade deficit yes that's what i have already told you about so uh, many times i feel that whenever we wish to show the uh, um, uh, alumni of the institute engineering institute everybody shows that oh this ex fellow is uh, working in this particular company having this much of package or why is working in that company Z is in USA or in some other advanced countries is serving there and all that I think uh, all these uh, are okay but I wish to see a person Z from the Institute who has started his company and employed at least 10 to 15 people I think he is more valuable to us our ecosystem has to be developed in such a way in the institute where we are giving more importance to such people those who are starting their own company and maybe anywhere i don't mean to say that only they should start in india even in usa they are they have started their company and they have employed these many people i think that is what is the need of the day so ultimately deliverable as i mentioned to you helps nation to develop because the trade deficit will be uh, we will overcome the trade deficit and what is important that there has to be more and more patent by uh, involving uh, the research into the uh, educational institute and as i already told you it is the job of the phd uh, uh, responsibility of the phd students and phd guide and institute together that how best it will be possible for us to create innovation remember here i am just showing you the patent grant there is a specific reason behind that the reason is that the whenever the phd or anything we talk about or mtech we talk about you only talk about the research papers and the research papers generally are okay just to show that okay this is what the research you have done but patent patent actually shows what innovation you have carried out and i think if you visit the patent website of uh, uh, indian patent office you'll find that it is mentioned which has industrial application the innovation which has industrial application so naturally we do want such patents and if we get such patents as i already told you at the start of my lecture that if the company is not ready to manufacture your product and if you feel if you feel that there is a tremendous potential in your product which is definitely sellable better start your own company enter into that domain and see that you become the job creator now let us look at the approach i hope once the necessity of research is very clear i think then what should be our approach because ultimately it is the collaborative research which is what we'll have to 
make it a crystal clear at the end of the presentation so approach is uh, basically four points need based and interdisciplinary secondly team oriented third focus towards the new scientific knowledge and last research should be deployable ready to use your research should be deployable ready to use so what exactly i mean to say when i said need based and interdisciplinary i hope uh, many of you must be available uh, must be aware about this particular quadrant bohr quadrant pascher quadrant or edison quadrant they say that the pascher always used to do the research which is user inspired uh, use inspired research basically he was working on a basic research but he always like to see whether this is useful to the common man useful to the society or whether it is use inspired or not and that is what you people will know very well that he has developed the pasteurization process and everything what about the bohr quadrant the bohr quadrant is about the bohr who only talks about more and more basic research very few thing is discussed about its usage and therefore when who only looks at the basic research but never looks at its implication uh, implant uh, or implication in for the society i think you are only on that particular quadrant of bohr and what about an edison edison was only on the applied research that means he used to only go on doing the experiment after the experiment i think many of you must be aware of this particular thing that he was actually doing the experimentation in the railway bogey also and he has, he was caught that time because there was some explosion and all that so he was not focusing more on the basic research but only on the experimentation so that's what they talk about a recent pattern we had to look, we had to be in the pasture pattern remember we had to do the basic research at the same time see that it is use inspired it is useful to the society so let me tell you once the need is known of the research because there is a need of the research in the society there is a need based research then let us look at this i rather say that all this discipline should be together this is some of the sample i shown mechanical engineering computer engineering biomedical engineering chemical materials engineering electronics engineering and all together and i get the plus 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 sign here what exactly the focus is the focus is interdisciplinary you can't remain focused only on your discipline and think of the research the research has to be interdisciplinary many times the people say that what is the difference between a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary you know you can very easily look at the wikipedia and they'll say that multidisciplinary working independently in all the discipline but in interdisciplinary all of them working together with only one single task of developing a product or developing a process so naturally if you are a mechanical engineer you have to see that others are also with you to to get that research successfully deployed in the in, uh, society then only you find that it is really very very catchy at the same time the product is sellable process is doable so interdisciplinary and need based approach has to be there and that's what i always used to say uh, many times in many institutes that i want that the my, uh, next to my cabin there should not be a mechanical engineering faculty member but the faculty member from other discipline should be there maybe i will I, i i will be more happy if i am given a seat in the science department to sit so that i can discuss with this some other people and do from the other discipline and hopefully something will come out as an interdisciplinary uh, i think infinity corridor in iit bombay they simply talks about the same thing they say that just move along that corridor you will meet with so many people from the different discipline hopefully that will lead you to some very nice uh, research which is interdisciplinary now what should be team oriented yeah i think a very good example is uh, that of uh, dr abdul kalam if you read the books of dr abdul kalam you will find that everything whatever he has done that was team oriented and you know the dedication uh, the their his uh, researchers are carrying the rockets on the bicycle loading the satellite on a bullock car and uh, professor abdul kalam working with his uh, colleague who is actually working on a banana and that too in a remote place called thumba quite far from the trivendram 70 kilometers or so from the trivendram people always uh, call bad names to the place where they are working they say that i am working in this particular town and therefore there is a problem no he has worked there and ultimately what is interesting po point here when you talk about the team oriented i think this tells everything 
everything towards me no throw your ego in the dust bars bin and see that all team is together if you if you take this approach you will be 101% successful i am actually experiencing that when i am doing the multi institutional multi uh, discipline interdisciplinary project so next one focus towards the new scientific knowledge yes what should be your approach you should always look at the new scientific knowledge so two uh, two interesting um, uh, field i'm rather showing it here one is the additive manufacturing the rapid prototyping which is very useful in innovative product and 3d printing the people they will talk about and the other one i'm talking about is artificial intelligence machine learning that means the cyber physical system where the physical real world is connected with the virtual world of the it so you should look focus uh, attention on new scientific knowledge rather than only thinking about the existing knowledge and finding out what research i can do it sometimes the students approach to me saying sir that i would like to do something on a, a bearing i said what exactly you would like to do uh, in the bearing so he talks blah 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 about the same principle that is been used in the bearing and i have some material in my mind and all that i said lot of work has been already carried out under the travelology now think of any new scientific knowledge and hopefully that is useful in the travelology that should be the better approach rather than uh, only uh, fixing yourself or keeping yourself in a water tight domain of a particular discipline or particular um, uh, focusing on a particular area of your discipline and then saying that okay i will be now doing research is really very tough task very challenging task rather focus to a new scientific knowledge i'm going to rather tell you about this uh, later on uh, from my own experience also the research should be deployable that means ready to use what exactly it means now this is the project which we are presently executing in our vna chinakpur so that is biomedical engineering and technology incubation sub center under betik iit bombay betik is the title that we use it our short form for the whole world and iit bombay is our mentor and uh, we are actually working on this and in this particular research project we are rather targeting that the, whatever the research we say that is done under this particular project we wish to show to the people that it is deployable also that means in the in the society the people are taking the advantage of it the people are getting benefited out of that so one of the project that i have completed long back uh, from 2009 to 14 uh, about the development and testing of customized joint replacement implants using layer manufacturing we have seen that the many successful stories we have created and what i have seen that through this research some of the interesting cases that we have handled which i would like to show you sorry for the some uh, blood and everything that is being shown here but this is the these are the few cases that we have completed up till now live medical cases around 20 live medical cases we have completed and this is the these are the sample of it one is on the temporo mandibular joint for bony ankylosis here this is the implant that we have developed it's a big story and you know uh, for this is not the right platform where i can discuss that story and all that but we have developed this implant which is innovative product fitted into the patient body that is a girl who was not in a position to open her mouth uh, mouth for the last 6 years and we have successfully done it so that is what exactly is the deployment of the research and this is all the research you can see the rp model here you can see the clay model here the reverse engineering rapid prototyping designing finite element analysis everything into the picture and ultimately even the manufacturing of this product which is not a standard product so that is what we have done as a deployment the another one is the malignant tumor and this is the mandible tumor which is uh, mandible which is affected by the malignant tumor we have actually used the implant that is fitted into the patient body to see that the deformity that is uh, seen in the patient suffering from the malignancy in mandible that can be overcome if at all the implants are developed suiting to the patient's uh, problem uh, and this is what we have also done successfully then we have also done these some very nice studies with the nottingham university uk and that's what i told you if some of the cases that i have shown it here the uh, around 20 cases are there and i need a separate uh, 
platform where I can only talk about our uh, research in medical domain. But what I would like to tell you, the research, whatever you say, it should be deployable. And if you can do that, I think your approach is right. And that is why I, I told you about the what are the approaches to be done. Now, let me show you what is my experience. Mm -hmm. uh, see, I have started with mechanical design. Then I entered into the computer aided design. Then I found that the rapid prototyping is the most logical extension of that. Then I have entered into the RPA assisted casting, the way you have already seen that how the implant is manufactured. And then medical rapid prototyping and then to tissue engineering. And then to next, what else? The hopefully the use of artificial intelligence in tissue engineering. So you can see the just like uh, the sinusoidal way I'm going from one field to the other. But you'll find that with this particular path or with this particular approach, I found mm, the research, whatever we are doing, is deployed. Otherwise, if we would have been, if I would have been in the mechanical design side and only thinking about that particular aspect and not even entering into the computer related design, hopefully you would not have called me for this particular session. So what I would like to tell you is that this is the experience and everyone should follow that. I told you interdisciplinary. Now, what is the another interesting point that everyone should be, uh, should be aware of? Association with the faculty members from LIT students. This is a big yes. IITs, NITs, ISC, ISER, there are a lot of allied institutes in India. You give yourself associated with the faculty members there. Now, find out the faculty member who is working in the same field where you are working or where you are having an interest. Regular contact by emailing them, informing them about the project done at your institute, maybe under the BTEC and MTech, and hopefully you will find that the uh, this particular uh, emailing actually creates a bond and once the bond is created hopefully you can ask him maybe the some meeting personal meeting by appointment or by any other method but see that you get connected i am just showing you this particular picture these are the two people who are very special in my life professor b ravi from iit bombay and Dr. Manish Agrawal, who is an oncologist in a um, Hindu hospital. All three of us are together in, under that particular Betty project. And I learn a lot from them because of my association with such people. So ultimately, what I would like to tell you is that you have to start your association with faculty members. And then you will find that you will understand that how exactly the, your approach should be in the uh, research field uh, in which you are interested. Now, next interesting point. I hope uh, I already told you a uh, lot of points related to the approach. But let us look at the research grant. Nothing is possible without the grant. So what is this research grant is all about? Now, how to get the research grant? There are only two funding agencies, government and private. Unfortunately, in India, private players are not very active in research grant, which is the one of the major hurdle or major problem in India. You'll find that in developed countries, the major players in, fund, uh, in the funding is the private industries or the private firms. In our India, it is basically the government which is uh, more uh, active in the research grant. But I think we, we need to rather create the ecosystem where the private players should come and grant you as the grant for the research. Now, uh, what about the research grant? What exactly we should do? There will be no, every every now and then there is a call from the DST, DBT, BAR, uh, RGSTC, and everybody that uh, they give the call for the proposal. Sometimes the calls are always open 20, uh, for all 365 days. What exactly you should do when such calls are there? You have to write a proposal. But then in that proposal writing, I have listed down the five important points. I hope you have to look into this very carefully. Remember, collaborative research needs uh, is very easy uh, for the funding. But unless you present it properly, how do you present it? The first point is need analysis. That why do you feel that this particular area of research is important? Because there is a need in the society 
for that particular product and this should be supported by data existing is the problem like this we are working on the tissue engineering we are working on the organ transplantation we are working on the scaffold development so we show to the funding agency that there is a problem of organ transplantation and how this particular problem can be overcome by our research where we are focusing on in vitro organ development wherein this particular tissue engineering is more important so when the need analysis is seen immediately the funding agencies they look at your project very carefully and they rather like to fund your call otherwise the money has to be given so they need a very strong proposal number 2 deliverable remember the need analysis and deliverable both are very very close together because what is their final output my final output is that in vitro organ development immediately that will be catchy my final deliverable is the flying car which will overcome the traffic jam in the metro cities only for that particular traffic jam my car will fly so that is what is the deliverable immediately the people start looking at your project methodology remember simply talking about the deliverable and need analysis will not work but what you have to do you will have to talk about how to get the deliverable methodology now remember here when i say methodology how to get deliverable sometimes when you are when you are entering in the research field as a very um uh, as a beginner you may not be having the facilities so therefore only talking about the big thing in first go is never accepted so suppose i am writing a proposal of 2 crores or 10 crores and i am not having any facility at my end i think nothing will get funded maybe you may say that for the last 3 years we are working on this this much facility we do have which is uh, very very uh, important as a prerequisite for the research which i am writing in the proposal hopefully that will be uh, that is what the funding agency wants and there as i already told you when you talk about the interdisciplinary it is not the resources in your in, in your department but these are resources in other department and hopefully if you talk about the multi institutional project just like the smart funding we do have so here you will find that the institute other institute resources also get involved and the chances of getting the proposal funded is very high for one focus on what going on in india you will have to talk about that like this is where and so for that you will have to search a lot and finally your contact with academician from allied institute play dominant role as i already told you once your proposal is ready before submitting it to the funding agency if you can show it to the person from the allied institute and if you take his comment and if you say that okay if you say that yes you can submit it to the uh, xyz funding agency uh, which you have already uh, emr hopefully chances of getting the proposal funded is very high because he knows where exactly to be look at in the proposal otherwise i have seen when i am the reviewer for many proposal it's like the shopping list the student they just write down the proposal i want this 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 like that so i say that as if he is coming for the shopping for in this funding agency or he wants something to do with that so that should not be there so think over it very carefully proposal writing is important now what is my experience about the research grant and the proposal proposal writing is as good as another phd writing this is right and it is different than the phd in the sense when you actually do the phd you know at least you are sure that you, you will get the phd in the proposal writing you will find that chances of getting the proposal rejected is more so if if that is the case should i not write the proposal i think that is where exactly we are doing wrong you have you as i already told you if your proposal is evaluated by the academician of repute your proposal is bound to get funded but even if it is not get funded doesn't matter it has got some substance in it there will be another call from the some other funding agency you can resubmit it you can even ask the funding agency who has rejected your proposal that where exactly you find a problem in my project so the, you have to look into that you have to go and deeper and deeper into the proposal and i am 100% sure that once you write the proposal it will be definitely funded now the fourth point is about the suggestion i think uh, time is getting up so i have to uh, uh, rather wind up soon suggestion is that research and teaching should go together i already told you it has got a tremendous impact on teaching research is very much valued in academic world 
and need of the hour is to focus on innovative product which will help industry to survive now let's look at this research is very much valued in academic world i'm just showing you the pictures of some of the best institute in the world are uh, mit cambridge iisc bangalore iit uh, indian institute of technology and all that you'll find that research is given due importance in this particular institute to whom we also call as an academic institute and you find that they are uh, they are they have, it has been proved that they are the best institute academic institute only because of the research okay so this is one of the interesting point you have to look at now third this important point need of the hour to focus on innovative product which will only help industry to survive i think many of you must be aware of the industry 4.0 and all that remember industries will not survive if they don't uh, involve in innovation and that's why i think this particular picture is more uh, important that through innovation the industry which is not surviving which is bound to fail only through innovation it can survive and therefore innovation is the key word and you will have to see that the is through the research only the innovation is possible so that is important for all of us to understand even the industry people to understand otherwise simply uh, 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 thinking about our traditional approach will never help us in long run remember industry 4.0 is coming up very fast in advanced country and as i already told you the trade deficit and all problem that we are particular facing they will be amplified by n number of n number uh, factor and that uh, that will be again another problem and problem for the technical world, uh, field in india so finally the conclusion i hope uh, the time is almost up that i would like to ask you the question so that you will not ask me the question in the conclusion anyhow it's like to judge your intellectual work to be called as innovation answer the following question does the intellectual work bridge the gap between theory and practice that is number 1 intellectual work means again i am talking about the research how can the intellectual work be used in practice in teaching and to influence the public policy and third point is more important what is an impact on the society what is the impact upon the society especially influencing the public attributes affecting the quality of the life why do we want that of the indian picture of india should be shown by showing the beggar we would like to show that people are affluent and they are doing wonderfully well and this is only possible if we focus more on this particular research as well so questions is there i think i am the teacher so i must tell you what is the answer the answer is a uh, very simple answer is collaborative research in academic industry that's all the whatever i had discussed up till now that is all the answer and what is collaborative it is a multi institutional and interdisciplinary so if you can talk about this if you can uh, focus your attention on collaborative research it will be really very interesting and uh, 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 top of it as i already told you that if the focus is on the collaborative research in the academic institute i am 101% sure that the no institute has to go and search for the students the students will automatically get attracted towards that particular institute because that is what is the need of an hour in the whole technical world not only in india but all over the uh, world okay so let me finish by telling you one nice experience that when i had delivered the talk in mit us in 2011 Message in stop technology, which is called as the Makka Madina of what uh, uh, knowledge. So uh, here, when I seen that the students were there and I was delivering a lecture, what exactly the difference I noticed? You know, we do talk about the positive thing. Everybody said that you should have the positive thinking. You should have the positive thinking. Then to progress, positive thinking is important. There are seminar, there are workshops and uh, articles and so and so forth. remember what i have seen that for positive thinking you must first create the positive environment everyone should be feel everyone should feel that yes this is something what is positive and i can achieve it in this particular environment where i am surviving or where i am actually working so creating the positive environment that is what i have seen in mit wherever you go you feel that yes i can do this also Oh, I can work here, and this type of a positive environment they have created, and that is why that is number one institute in the world. So that is this is in general. So I would like to uh, uh, finish my uh, that. Ye patati likati pashyati paripuchati pandita nupashyapi tasya divaga rakilni nalini dalam eva vistari taputi. 
So you know this very well that one who lives with the learned man, you will always find that you are intellectual expanse like the lotus leaf. So I'm just showing you a nice uh, picture here that uh, I, uh, he, uh, he he was my ex director. So I, uh, I was explaining them our, about our achievement. Then the Dr. Anil Kakorkar Sahab was there. So and then this fellow is my student. So, you know, I, I found that the students are also very, very intellectual and we should be al always sit with them, interact with them. So if the company of learn men is with you, oh, you will definitely find that your intellectual will expand. So thank you very much for nice hearing. And uh, my email address is mkv2 at your.com. Please do connect to me. I'll be really happy. And as I already told you, uh, to, uh, it's Vipin's responsibility to, to see that uh, uh, faculty members and the uh, students of the Baramati Indian College, they should come and see our CADCAM Center and uh, uh, it will be a nice interaction with all of them. Thank you very much. I think I'm on the line. Uh, let me ensure. So let me stop sharing. Yeah, so uh, Vipin, are you on the line? Yeah, hello. Vipin, hello, Vipin. Yeah. Uh, yes, I just sir. finished it. Uh, okay. uh, everything, everything was, uh, uh, I don't know because I was only looking at my slide. So yes, uh, there was no interruption as such any time? No, 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 sir. Okay, thank yeah, you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, so yeah. Any, any questions or anything yeah, yeah. I think you can uh, see on the chat? Yes, I, I request all the participants, if you have any questions uh, regarding the uh, today's topic, uh, you please uh, write in the chat box. Uh, yeah, okay. I can see some questions being asked. I would like to yeah. just uh, answer that. Uh, okay. Dear sir, if interdisciplinary research is accepted in our inner system, where rules are very much conventional, and many and many times qualification experience achievement in particular branch is considered unlike most of the foreign universities in IITs. Uh, yeah, I think remember uh, about the rules, regulations, guidelines, uh, uh, framework of the system. You will have to slowly find out some way to come out of that, if at all, not in total uh, replacing them by the new rules. There has to be some baby steps to be taken. You can't take a, a longer step and say that, okay, this is because of this, I cannot do it. Take some baby steps. And yes, I know a lot of people, a lot of difficulties you may face. But remember, that is why it is valuable. If anything is actual without any effort, then why, why, why uh, the research will be so important? Then? Anybody can do the research. Remember, if we can rather uh, uh take the baby steps overcome the problems i think you can definitely uh get the success in that uh yeah any other question is there i will be really happy to answer uh, uh the nice session <laughs> yeah yeah uh yes, sir uh, actually the, the question is from my side only yeah, great, great. Uh, yeah. So being the, the private uh, institute uh we are actually having very limited resources in our institute Okay. And, and we we expect uh, the collaborative research with uh, the institute like uh, these IIT and NITs as you have mentioned. Uh, yeah. Is there is there is there uh, the NITs and IIT provide such type of the collaboration with uh, the private institutes? Uh, you see, uh, Vipin, uh, this is a really very nice question, and I think uh, this is applicable to almost all the institutes, not only to private institute but even NITs also. Nowadays. There are many IITs, there are many NITs, there are many government colleges, and everybody faces this problem. Hopefully, you are talking about the private colleges linking with the IITs. Even we find the problem of linking with the IITs, IIT find the problem with the linking with the uh, foreign universities. This is the basic problem everywhere. I'll tell you one key so called solution to all. May, you may call it a Brahmastra. So, like, you know, start doing some work research work of maybe a small uh, magnitude maybe that particular work that you are doing is interact with the academician from the 
elite institute maybe the or maybe institute of the same locality doesn't matter but then show that that research has a potential and that particular um, research is deployable also in the society the people are taking advantage of that you know nowadays with the social media and all that you can even uh, write to uh, you can show to everybody that how what exactly you have done and how it has benefited the uh, uh, benefited the uh, society people in the society and then when you interact with the academician of the allied institute or maybe when you present it in the funding agency that this is what we have achieved maybe on a smaller magnitude and we would like to scale that we want to uh, uh, enter into the bigger domain i hope that is possible that is what should be done rather than always asking the people that okay i would like to work with you tell me what is to be done and all that let me tell you many times the people used to come to my cabin and ask me sir naya kya hai bolo naya kya hai bolo main bolta hai bhai main bolu kabhi aap bhi bolo so that both of us will start interacting and then hopefully i can get some uh, knowledge which will upgrade even me also so i would like to tell you is that the interaction and some part from your side and remember it has to be not only on the software but even on the hardware side also if you can do it i think you can definitely achieve i know resources are problem not only with your institute but most of the institutes and when we people work on a big project like crores we sometimes feel that we are also lagging the resources to execute that type of the research and therefore we have to write down then the uh, uh, research project collaborating with the uh, institute abroad and see that the more and more uh, uh, amount uh, more and more research fund will come so i hope uh, i have answered your uh, uh, question i don't know between to what extent i have answered but this is what i feel personally uh okay thank you very much sir uh, yeah. uh before going to the formal uh, the vote of thanks uh, yeah. i want to mention uh, some of the, the one student uh, from 2008 batch vnit cat camp uh, yeah. dr vijay gadak is with us uh, oh, great, said, great. yeah 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 great vijay gadak is my student yeah, yeah nice yes, to see you, gadak yeah yeah, uh, yeah vijay uh, uh, actually sir recently uh, he has got uh, 34 lakhs uh, funding from the aict and mm-hmm. now he is developing the uh, the uh, welding uh, advanced welding lab in his uh, institute at uh, Sang- uh, amrutwani Sang- college of engineer yes and yeah. uh, i have asked him to, uh, just to collaborate with us and uh, allow our students to uh, that means uh, take the projects in 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 in, uh, in his college also so yeah. i think uh, so i i asked do, uh, dr vijay gadak if he is here uh, uh, dr uh, gadak sir yeah no but uh, uh, vipin let me tell you one thing yes, like uh, if you are requested uh, vijay to collaborate with you or maybe you would like to ask your students to work in that the uh, field better do something at your end also uh, and show him that this is what can be done yes. and then hopefully if you are not in a position to rather uh, uh, use the resources for the hardware better do something for the software and they show him that this is what you can do then he will be happy he will interact with you then he will like to inter- give you more and more uh what uh, task to be done so yeah. it should be both way you can't yeah. clap clap with the with the single hand you have to clap with the two hands so yes sir. So try to do that do to try to do that yeah the uh uh gadak sir vijay gadak sir i think he's there uh vijay is there on the line i am really happy because he is there because uh, we, i i always remember him that because of every festival season on every 15th august 26th january without fail he send me the sms and uh, reminds me about his presence in that uh, college of sangamnet very nice i am really happy with yeah. him that you are in touch with him yes, uh, so so this is how you have to build your network and yeah. i told you this is what exactly the collaborative but now you are two together try to see that once you are something is achieved try to get link with the uh elite institutes like iits directly yes. and uh, would find out who is the person working in the same field maybe in iit bombay iit delhi iit kanpur now you are around having so many iits nowadays and uh, 
tell him that this is what you have done. You would like to interact with him and all that. I hope he will then definitely take interest and you can then get more and more uh, rather funding also from the various other agencies. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now uh, I request now the uh, Dean R&D of our institute, Dr. Uh, Sachin Bhose, sir, to present the vote of thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, uh, Dr. Albay Kumar Kute, sir. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gaudi. Uh, Dr. Kute, sir, uh, I would like to mention that we believe that the, the research adds value to the teaching. And we very much agree with the approach which you mentioned that collaborative research means multi, it has to be multi institutional and interdisciplinary as well. Definitely. Uh, it was a great session. Thanks for enlightening all of us with your valuable thoughts and valuable time. We would like to hear more on uh, the free form fabrication in medical sciences, which you are working on a project. And we are excited with your dedicated camp, CAD camp center with state of, the, uh, state of the art facilities, specifically the 3D bio plotter and tissue engineering excites us more. Because here at VPKBIT Baramati, we are trying to teach our students how can we manufacture customized implants from CT scan data. Because CT scan basically gives us data in the form of DICOM format, and then we convert it into an RD file format, and then STL file format, and then finally we get the .xt3 xpg file format, which we can print it with 3D printing. So uh, definitely we are interested with that. We would like to hear more on your RGSTC project, Biomedical Engineering and Smart Foundry as well. So hopefully we'll meet again and we agree with your approach which you uh, proposed that we need to have association with faculty members from elite institutes. So definitely we look ahead to have collaboration with your department to have shared publications with VNID faculty. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable time. I would thank Dr. Gawande and all our uh, officials, Dr. P Principal Dr. Bichkar, Vice Principal Dr. Lande, all my respected head of departments, uh, Dean Academics, Dr. Shastri, and all my faculty colleagues. So uh, being present here. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for your valuable time. Thank you. So. Uh, so thank you very much to all. Uh, so I'll be leaving the meeting. I hope everything is fine. Vipin, is it all right? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, bye.